Finn Balor has just defeated his former Judgment Day brother Damian Priest to become the new World Heavyweight Champion, but he couldn't do it on his own. As with Balor getting kicked out of the group six months ago with the numbers in Judgment Day growing, he had to make a few calls. And now by his side is JD McDonough, Carl Anderson and Tamatonga, a reformed OG Bullet Club with an added bonus of JD McDonough. And they have one mission, one sole purpose, to become the most dominant faction within WWE. So on the following episode of Raw, Bullet Club starts their domination. They take out anyone and everyone, but they give extra beatings to those who are in factions as this Raw is marked as a Superstar Shake Up special, where all three rosters are shaken to the core. However, in the main event, there's a fatal void to determine who will be the first to challenge the leader of the Bullet Club. And the participants include Drew McIntyre, who defeated Seth Rollins only 24 hours prior, Jey Uso, Damien Priest and Bronson Reed. Yet before the match can even get the second gear, here comes Bola Club and they absolutely obliterate everyone and they even put Damien Priest for the announcers table. They wreak havoc and leave and in the end, Jey Uso collapses onto Damien Priest and punches his ticket to France. But before that, Tabatonga and Carnison start setting their sights on the WWE Tag Team Championships and they beat down the champions. Bullet Club are coming for all the gold and that includes the Intercontinental Championship as JD McDonough starts involving himself in Sami Zayn's business which in turn starts involving Alpha Academy and more in particular Chad Gable, and they're still targeting Jey Uso as they try to soften him up for Jey's match at Backlash. Speaking of, the match card regarding Bullet Club looks like this. JD McDonough vs Bron Serena vs Sami Zayn vs Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship, Awesome Truth taking on Tomatango and Carl Anderson, and finally in the main event, Finn Balor taking on main event Jey Uso. And up first is the 4-way for the Intercontinental Championship and it's an absolute banger, but McDonough is struggling to compete with the larger Bron Serena and the technical wizard Chad Gable, but due to this, he doesn't concentrate on taking down Sami Zayn, which ends up costing him. As with everyone out of it, Zayn nails a huluva kick on McDonough to pick up the win. And Bullet Club are raging backstage, which boils over until the Tag Team Championship match as Tabatago and Cardison are destroying Awesome Truth. But as soon as it looks like we're about to see new Tag Team Champions, here comes Judgment Day. Dominic Mysterio and Damien Priest distract both men long enough for The Miz to get the roll up win. But immediately after the match, Bullet Club stop brawling with everyone and they're looking like they're going to injure Damien Priest when a surprising assistance comes in. Tangaloa comes out of nowhere, but he sides with Bullet Club, and just like that, they stand. At all. But we still have a main event, and it's a phenomenal showcase for Jey Uso, but in the end, Finn Balor gets the clean victory over Jey. Thus, on the following night of Raw, Bullet Club opened the show, and whilst Balor gives a speech on wanting to expand in the women's division, everyone is showering them with hatred. But JD McDonough and Tangaloa aren't out there, and that's for a more formal introduction to the club. However, Tangaloa carries out McDonough's lifeless body, whilst Balor says that he refuses to tolerate weakness, and kicks him out the group. However, McIntyre comes out and starts brawling with Balor, but that's not all. Shame this Priest and Dominic all come out and assist McIntyre in ridding off Bullet Club. Nevertheless, Adam Pearce announces the main event in the more contenders match between better rivals Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. But before that, Balor can be seen talking to several female competitors such as Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. However, Bullet Club don't care about the main event. They beat down both men as soon as the match is reaching its climax. Although Pearce says instead of fighting one of them, Balor can fight both in Scotland. And Bullet Club are absolutely fuming. So the following week, they interrupt Awesome Truth of a challenge for the Tag Team Championships. And they gladly accept. Thus the match is on, but in the end, we see new WWE Tag Team Champions with Tamatogra and Tangaloa capturing the gold. Moreover, Carl Anderson enters the King of the Ring tournament and even manages to make it to the semi-finals before getting eliminated by Ilya Dragunov, thanks to JD McDonough screwing him in a cracker of a match. But due to this, Carl Anderson gets an opportunity to fight Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship at Clash of the Castle, whilst McDonough can fight the newest member of Bullet Club, Tangaloa. Thus, Clash of the Castle's card in regards to Bullet Club is set, and opening the card is Tangaloa taking on JD McDonough in a David vs Goliath style match. Matchup. And it's an absolute banging way to open the show. Although in the end, JD McDonough manages to lift the big man up and plant him down after Priest came out to screw Tangaloa. Then in the middle of the show, Zayn and Anderson tear the house down in an absolute classic match. But in the end, Zayn just manages to retain. But with Anderson being a founding member of Bullet Club, he gets a pass in regards to failing to capture gold. And far later in the show, in the main event of the evening, Bala takes on McIntyre and Sheamus. And it's an absolute war between all three men. No one has the specific advantage of the match as all three men and tear the non-existent roof off the building. However, in the end, Sheamus nails Balor with a bro kick, but as soon as he does this, McIntyre obliterates Sheamus, and just like that, we have a new World Heavyweight Champion. But I thought Bullet Club doesn't tolerate weakness. Well, on the Raw after Clash at the Castle, Balor makes one thing crystal clear, that he and Anderson weren't weak. He wasn't the one who got pinned, therefore the Bullet Club are still as strong as ever. And with this, he announces that he is still on the hunt for a female competitor to join the ranks of Bullet Club. But then a fan eagerly shouts that Bullet 
World Cup as a failure, which sets Balor off to the point where he starts attacking the fan and puts him through the announcer's table. Pierce then comes out and immediately suspends the Prince of Darkness on the spot. So whilst Balor is suspended, Carl Anderson temporarily leads Bullet Club and with this, they're very successful. Carl Anderson wins a match to enter Money in the Bank and the rest of Bullet Club still dominate the tag team division, but one faction they can't dominate is the Judgment Day, as it's announced the two teams will face off for the tag team championships at Money in the Bank. But before then, Bullet Club, with the permission of the Prince, introduced the newest member of the group as Dakota Kai betrays damage control to join the group. Anyways, what about JD McDonough? What is he up to during this period? Well, whilst Bullet Club are running his show, McDonough gets a few big victories behind him against the likes of Bronson Reed and former Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn. And with this, JD gets an opportunity for Chad Gable's newly won Intercontinental Championship. And that match opens the show and it's an absolute banging way to kick off Money in the Bank with each man trading blows, but in the end, after 15 minutes of total non-stop action, Finn Balor returns and screws JD on the championship. Up next for the Bullet Club are some tag team mayhem as the Grillers of Destiny take on Jamie Priest and Dominic Mysterio of Judgment Day and it's an absolute classic. However, the chemistry between the Grillers of Destiny is too much for Judgment Day to handle as G.O.D. retain the tag team championships. In addition, following this, Dakota Kai takes on the leader of the crumbling damage control EO Sky alongside Larry Valkyria, Chelsea Green, Nia Jax and Naomi in the Woman's Money in the Bank ladder match, which primarily focuses on the story of damage control falling apart, although the winner wasn't a member of the former group as Chelsea Green becomes Mr. Money in the Bank. And lastly, in the main event, Carl Anderson competes in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match alongside Die Jack, Sami Zayn, Ilya Dragunov, AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Andrade and LA Knight. And with the talent involved, of course it's an absolute banging match, but in the end, Andrade unhooks the briefcase and becomes Mr. Money in the Bank. So some successes and some failures for Bullet Club. And leading into SummerSlam, Bullet Club's war of Judgment Day and JD McDonough intensifies, which leads to Adam Pearce announcing a triple threat held a cell match between Finn Balor, Damian Priest and JD McDonough to end the war once and for all. And on top of this, Damage Control have completely fallen apart so it's decided there'll be a fatal four-way match between all former members of Damage Control at the biggest party in the summer. And it's absolute chaos wherever you turn regarding Bullet Club as no one seemingly has the advantage of leading into the show. And the fatal four-way match is up first in regards to Bullet Club in the middle of the show and it's a phenomenal showcase for all of the women involved although in the end, I'd have a babyface Carrie Sane pin and defeat Asuka in the middle of the ring to put an end to the rivalry. But that's not the most demonic part of the show because in times of crisis, the Demon King arrives but not from Finn Balor surprisingly as JD McDonough decides to play some mind games with his former mentor and with Priest making his entrance it's time for the true hell of the night to begin and what a war it is but in the end JD McDonough goes over by pinning Finn Balor. Bullet Club's leader has been truly defeated but the Bullet Club never dies. No matter what. And if you like this story and want to know how Finn Balor became world heavyweight champion in this timeline check out the first part of the story.